Welcome to the Whiskey Vaults. Word up. This is, we're doing another Shepard day. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just a couple of whiskeys from Shepard. Going full Shepard. And keep in mind, I've read this a couple of times. I'm gonna say it for the second time, and I'm never gonna say it again. There's been some people giving Shepard No, what the f are you doing? Because it's like, man, this f***ing Shepard guy only gives stuff no one can get. No, it's like, here's the reality, You don't buddy. get to give this We give this Yeah. We give this Yeah. Thank you to Shabber for sending us yes. some, some weird, questionable choices. And, That's the point. Here's the reality the of point life. of the channel. To those people who are annoyed by this. Right. It's not a Shepard problem. No. It's a 2022 problem. 90% <laughs> of what we have up there is un impossible for anyone else Daniel, to get. Daniel, I don't see it as a problem. I see it as an opportunity. Yeah. To shine the light on how many different ways MGP can be bottled and... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now here... Here's the reality of what I think about it. Right. I think we, uh, un, uh, for a lot of these whiskeys, are one of the only YouTube videos ever done for them. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so we are getting a chance to shine a light. Yeah. Um, and, you know, most of you may not be able to get it, but there's people in the area who I've seen a weird review of something and gone, shit, that place down the street from me. Yes. I never even would have thought of going there, but now you guys reviewed it. No. I'm going to go check it out. So I... Yeah, the ball dusting aside, mm -hmm. it, it feels kind of public servicey. Yeah, it does. It's like yeah, most people in the world, they're never even going to see this on a shelf. So in that way, it feels kind of public servicey. But at the same time, it does also feel like uh, an old timey um, gold, but just panhandling. Yeah, you shifting. never know when you find something amazing. So going through everything that's out there, and occasionally, and this happened several times before, occasionally mm -hmm. you find something like, holy sh! How is this not, you know? On, uh, on blogs and other YouTube yeah. channels, and then you see the size of the place. Yep. It's like, oh, okay. That's well, they why. deserve to be way bigger. So to go through a bunch of things that it's like, ah, eh, maybe hit or miss. But when it hits, though, damn. Yeah. yeah. All right. So what do we got here? All right. So we got Crater Lake from Bend, uh, farm to bottle, at least five year old estate rye. Farm. And I'm we got inside, and we've got New Basin rye, which is also from Oregon. Okay. Fifteen months plus mm -hmm. in smaller barrels from what I've read on their website. So some comparative tasting. Also grain to glass. All right, so you're saying... You Two Oregon whiskeys. You establish, I think, in the previous episode. It's like, hey, maybe we just do like a couple of bottles at a time. Yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going to put one little, little, one little uh, request. Okay. Can we at least have them be the same category so we can do some comparative tasting? Yes. Done. Two rise. So I guess comparative tasting, you know this. It's one of the most helpful things you can do to really pick apart Absolutely. what's in a whiskey, how it compares to other things. And we won't do it every time, but if I come up against like in the to be reviewed, like a couple side by sides, I can re I'll absolutely do that. Okay, where we go. Two Oregon rise. Okay. Two roughly a year ish mm -hmm. plus. Yeah. Roughly five years old. I dig. Both of them grain to glass made their own shit. Yes. And stickers on it. It's race. That one's good to go. I already opened it. No. Okay, start with the young. I opened it. <laughs> I opened it. All right. But but I did. Okay. You can have it. But but you did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First oh whoa! These are totally different. Wow. The new basin. And by the way, this is New uh, Bend Distillery's Crater Lake. New Basin is their um, resignation rye. This is a guy who um, resigned from being a teacher. And so he named his whiskey Resi resignation. Resignation is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I got to tell you right now, both of these, I'm digging the smell. Yeah, I. the first one caught me off guard because there's like a really young funk in this one. Yeah. But it's quickly overwhelmed by this molasses note. Yes, molasses. And there's like this melted marshmallow quality yeah. mixed in with the molasses. There is some richness in here. Man, if this had chocolate and graham cracker, we'd have a s'mores right now. But this is absolutely wow. a slightly toasted marshmallow with molasses. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna and then a little bit of a, a green grain forward note. Okay, this, this is, is this pot still? Because I'm getting a kind of... I don't actually know. I'm getting that kind of body, that thickness, that richness. Yeah, the weight. That, yeah, that I typically only get in a pot still. Damn, though. There's a lot of, you know, whiskey nerds out there that would like to nose on this. Ah, okay. And I'm going to go to the nose on Crater Lake. Wow. Ooh, that's yeah. way more classic ride to me. That's Dr. Pepper and licorice. It's got this savory quality. And mint. Uh-huh. What is that? There's a savory quality that reminds me 
some type of uh, soy yeah. or sesame oil. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They were getting there. Written close. Yeah. Some type of Asian infused type of uh, savory sauce. But behind that is all the classic, super strong rye aromatics of that almost uh, syrup, soda syrup. Yep. Um, mint, but like a spearmint, maybe a wintergreen. Okay, so this one is going to be more savory. The Crater Lake. The okay. I'm resignation gonna is going to be more with the young new basin resignation. Molassesy. Yeah, coming back, it really is molasses. Oh, much more oaky on the taste. Yeah. Oh, hey. Some honey. Oh, that's weird. That's what like is a, that? It's like a tanniny honey on the end. Yeah, but there's this little J hook of something that's um, in the neighborhood of black licorice. But it's not. It's like taking a corner. Yeah. Let's do that again. <laughs> Three fourths of the way through it went <laughs> left turn. <laughs> you know what? So There's like a, a barrel bitterness at the end that yeah, that's there. dominates the grain notes. But getting there. Mm -hmm. What is it like a milk chocolate? Almost, but that's too creamy. And this isn't creamy. It's rich and it's densely sweet. I think it could become creamy if it had more time. Yeah, because well, there is that young quality to that it. That tannin already took over. So if you give that thing more time, right. what you need to do is move it into a bigger barrel for you, a second yeah, round. Yeah, I was about to say, you know this is smaller barrels. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's no question. Yeah. Because the, the weight of that tannin is mm. way too heavy for how young that is. Mm. But it's good, actually. That's cool. All yeah. right. So the more I get into this, mm -hmm. the more that that tannin barrel note holds strong. Mm -hmm. And all these other notes, every sip I go in, they just get a little Buried bit more faint. A little bit more faint. Yeah. yeah. Well, and this is a, a hundred proof. Okay. So adding a little water to it might oh. help that. Now, once you get this in yet, going back to the nose, there's a little bit of a rubber. Dude, I made it. Did you? I made it. Starting 2020, 20, yeah. what is it? 2022? 22, yeah. Yeah. With a, Look where the trash can is. That's pretty I good. bounce it off my jacket, off the ice machine, that's and pretty, then in. That's pretty good, actually. That's totally... <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay, never repeat that. Okay. Uh, put your nose I'm in I'm going to the Crater Lake. And you getting some rubber? Yeah. yeah. That almost Campbelltown vibe. Like the Campbelltown of, that, of rye. <laughs> that savory, almost soy type of note kind of almost gets into like a rubber vibe. Yeah. It really is like a Campbelltown scotch uh, phenolic. Like a... Yeah. I love how unique both of these are. Mm. Oh, I that think, drink's really soft. It does. I think you're finding a lot more. Mm, I think rye you're finding a, Yeah, I think you're finding a lot more rye, like classic rye notes than I am. I am on the nose, not on the palate. Okay, but on the nose, the palate at forty six five drinks really soft and a, a soft touch. I gotta say, um, I haven't been that impressed with a lot of the Oregon stuff that we've done, but. These are really good. And I actually like the Crater Lake one. Yeah. The nose is still yeah. overwhelmingly rye for me. See, now but you're the gonna, palate is really nice. Now you're going to put me on the spot because you say not impressed with a lot of the Oregon stuff. Well, so I much of it was fact, in GP. I know for a fact that there's <laughs> been some freaking amazing Oregon stuff, mm -hmm. but I can't remember. And it, so, yeah. that doesn't help at all, does it? It really doesn't. Hi. Yeah. No, I know there's Oregon stuff that I love. Like, actually, some of my favorite Northwestern whiskeys in general, in the whole area of Washington, even going into Canada and BC and down the coast in, Cal in California uh, for West, um, there's some great ones in California. I mean, Oregon. One of my favorites is Emerald, their Irish approach to whiskey again. But so, there is, on both of these, a kind of a lively springy quality, mm -hmm. which is very common yeah. in rye. But... Damn, both of those, very unique. I dig it. I prefer this one. Okay. Uh, but I like this one too. See, I, for the first two and a half sips, I prefer this one. Mm -hmm. And then it shifts a corner. The things that I liked about it, they fade away. I'm left All tannin. With, it's, yeah. And then after two or three sips, I'm thinking this is where I'm at. The crater. And by light. the way, for uh, if you're watching this, this is batch 14 on the uh, new basin. Alan Freeman Ward, what's the bottle count in the whiskey vault? I don't know. It's, it's almost 3,000 bottles many. now. That many. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Guys like William Schaffer, who sends us weird stuff and takes one <laughs> for the team because people think they're going to get a whiskey that 
if they can get off the shelf yeah. here. <laughs> Cammy Buckeye, we need to get a counter going of how often Daniel yawns when Rex is in the middle of really trying to explain something. I'm just tired all the time. No, no, no. It's not all the time. <laughs> Just well, whatever you hear, <laughs> my soft, dulcet tones. Yeah. Uh, it just triggers a sleep mechanism. Yeah. Uh, hey, Daniel, you, I got this really good idea. There's a shift and a change. I think there's an opportunity. It's like, oh, <sighs> great. What was that? No, nah, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> no, it could only uh, it could get all he would be wildly successful and be a lot of fun for everybody. And, uh, but no, so they I'm sorry, what? Just take a nap. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> wildly successful. <laughs> Only wildly uh, successful. I think that's it. Uh, that yes. Oh, by the way, we need to benevolent bastard in a uh, Titan. So is that making him a benevolent Titan? Is he trashy or t standard he's Titan? Tra he's, at this point, I think he's reached trashy. He's trashy Titan. Yeah. Do you even know? Yeah. Are you just? I don't know what Dan chose as the point when it becomes trashy, but I think, I think it's to low twenties. I think we chose. Is it twenty one or something? Twenty two? Can we have behind the camera just a whiteboard of all of the the, yeah. the nonsense and the horse <laughs> that we made up that we make up, and then we have to be able to remember it later, right? Because it's <laughs> at this point, it's a lore. lot of horse. <laughs> yeah, it's like going to Comic Con and not knowing the lore of your own character character yeah. series. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, who's the be benevolent whatever? Yeah, it's, it's, I am Butler and Ryan Butler, you benevolent bastard well, of Titans of tr Trash involved somewhere. <laughs>